Hi everybody, we're live. Thank you for cooking with me. Today we're going to make fulad. And fulad is a traditional family recipe. I make this every festa. As you know, a lady of Fatima canceled, was canceled today. The festa was canceled today. And um, most festas were canceled because of uh, the virus. But we're gonna celebrate it. We're gonna have some, uh, make some fulad. I made some bifanas today. I don't know if you saw the video, but I have bifanas ready on the stove. We're gonna make some bifanas, and I'm gonna have some wine coolers, make some beer coolers. We'll have a little fun anyway. So let's get started. But before I get started, let me say hi to my granddaughters, Adia, Stella, Sedalia, and Amalia. How are you? They're watching me. They're gonna learn with Volvo how to cook, all right? So let's get started. Now, most of you may have the recipe already, and you may have the ingredients ready. If you want to cook with me, I've uh, just prepped a little bit. As you know from the ingredients we're going to need, I have in this little pan one cup of water, one half cup of olive oil, one stick of butter, and the yeast. Now, I want to talk to you about the yeast. The yeast is very important. Okay, you need uh, really good yeast. What I did is I picked up some fresh yeast at my bakery this morning. So they gave me this little piece. It's probably like, uh, I'd say 1.2, 1.5 ounces of yeast. This is fresh yeast. Or you can use three packets of yeast, okay? So go to your local bakery and you can ask them if they're willing to give you some fresh yeast. This, this has excellent results when you bake. So I'm gonna warm this up. What I'm gonna do though, I'm not adding the yeast yet. I'm gonna warm this up, the water and the olive oil and butter first. It's gonna melt. You don't want this hot. So before you add your yeast, you're gonna do the finger test. You're gonna put your finger in there. It should be warm, not hot. Because once you warm up the yeast too much, you're gonna kill the yeast. So let's go, let's uh, get ready. I'm gonna put this warming up a little bit. Okay. Okay, so, put this away. We also need for this recipe, let me put this flour away too. Okay, we're gonna need 10 cups of flour. I've added a tablespoon of salt already. Yeah, and of course, 10 large eggs. Did you put, do you need baking soda? Did you put that Baking in? soda, no. Or baking soda? No, we just need the yeast. So that's all we need, but I'm gonna add this after. Okay, and then um, I have probably, I don't know, three to four cups of the ham. This is, I use a, a smoked ham like the hams you get at Easter. And I have a porchi chorizo. I have some bacon. Normally I don't put bacon because I'm not a fan, but this time I'm gonna put some bacon in it. It's just for variety. So as you see, this is a lot of meat here. I probably won't use all this meat, but I'll just save some. And I'll, you know what, this is great for to make some eggs, like an omelet. So you're never gonna waste that. Okay, so, so again, this ham, it's a perfect East, uh, way to use up your Easter ham. I, of course, I didn't have any Easter ham today, but I, I went to get some, and uh, I saved the rest of the ham to bake ham for that. All right, so this is your 10 eggs. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna beat these eggs until foamy. So let's take this over to the mixer. Now this is a six quart kitchen egg. It's really a good size, so it's gonna have room for all the dough. If you don't have a six quart, you're just probably gonna have to go and just divide up the batter, you know, and do it do it twice. Or you can do this by hand in a nice big bowl, that works too. Okay, so I'm gonna put it mixing on low. The other way. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Is <laughs> it plugged in? Yeah. Here it goes. Okay, don't mind the noise. It's a little bit noisy. It's live cooking. There's nothing we can do about that. So let this heat a little bit. Okay, I'm going to come over to my stove. I want to be sure this is warming up, but not too hot. There, standing there. Okay, so I got my uh, yeast ready. I'll get my meats over here. Now these meats won't be used until after the dough rises. This dough is gonna probably take maybe 10 to 15 minutes to mix up. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna put it in this nice 
It's from Home Goods. It's from Home Goods, yeah. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grease it a little bit. And then I'm going to put my dough in here, cover it. It's going to rise probably an hour and a half. It could be less, I mean, it could be more. Or it could be less. See, as you know, every, every dough rises at different times. So normally it takes me one to one and a half hours for this dough to rise. Okay? So meanwhile, if anybody have any questions or anybody has any suggestions, comments, we're just going yeah. Okay. So when this is over, it will be posted to your Facebook page, yeah, so people okay. can go back yeah, you don't, and watch don't be afraid it. If you don't watch this whole video, you can come back yeah. anytime during the day and watch the video, watch the whole thing. And or, we'll post it to YouTube. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna post it on YouTube too, and and on my Team Maria's blog. So feel free to go to the blog, uh, the YouTube channel, and you can find most, most of my videos on there. Okay. So as you see, the eggs are beating. Put it a little bit higher. You have to get really foamy. The foamier the better. Okay, I'm gonna go back to that yeast. So this would have been the second day of the festa. Yeah. Today. The festa technically the first day was yesterday. It's a four day festa in Mobile. And today's the second day. So, yeah. Yeah. But hopefully, you know, next year we'll go and we'll have a really big celebration. Okay, so let me see. It's getting really foamy. See? So if people don't have a mixer what do you suggest? If you don't have an extra, you know, just use your muscle and like, get in there. And, um, you can use your hand for it, you know. Some people have dough hooks on the kitchen or anything like that. Yeah, you can see how this warmed up a little too much. Yeah, see it's how it's steamy. smoky? It's too hot. So now I have to let it cool down a little bit. I know. So let's shut this off a little bit. All right. So those eggs, those eggs are good. So now I'm gonna transpose this to a different bowl. And that's the way it's gonna cool it down, get it out of this hot pan. Okay. There. This will help it cool down a little bit. <laughs> okay. So let me see. Yeah, it's it's hot. We gotta wait. So we gotta wait. Ooh, it was a little too hot. See, th these things happen. These things happen in life cooking, and you'll have to, you know, you'll you'll know yeah. if it's too hot. You have to just wait a little while, which is fine. I'll let it sit for a little bit. You know what I can do? Meanwhile, I can make us a nice wine cooler. How's that? Does that sound good? <laughs> Does everybody like Portuguese wine coolers? I bet, right? Let's get this out of the way. Okay, so I'm gonna put this out of the way. Now I'm going to get my, my uh, ingredients for my wine cooler. This is my favorite wine cooler. Everybody has their favorites. So it's going to be Portuguese wine, of course, and some orange soda. But you can also use ginger ale. Okay, I'm going to just reach over here and get the ingredients. Okay, get a nice pitcher. So you can use either one. It's going to be half and half. I'm going to use half of the Portuguese wine, half of the orange, because that's my favorite. I need some ice, glass. There, that's my glass. So, what I'm going to do, let me get that ice. Of ice. Yeah, a lot of ice. What I did is I put some orange slices and lemon slices in first, but uh, if you don't like lemon and orange, you don't have to put it either. It just it gives it a nice, beautiful color. Okay, so let's go. Who likes wine coolers? I bet you everybody does. 
What kind of wine? This is red wine, but you can use rosé too. That works. Okay. So I'd say that's about half. I'm gonna do half orange. This is really, really uh, good. It has a beautiful orange flavor. Look at that. Ooh, Did you put the whole bottle? I used about a half, but you can put it. You know, if you like it really strong, you can do three fourths, three fourths red, red wine, and then look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That color. Okay, let's put this away. It's so nice and bubbly. see how this is doing. Yeah, is that warm yet? It's getting there. I think it's just about ready so I can add my yeast. But meanwhile, I'm going to stir my wine cooler. And I'm going to pour some. This is just a simple wine cooler. If I was going to make sangria, I would add more fruit and I would add some brandy. What I do is I add 1920 brandy. By the way, you can find the recipe for the wine coolers, the sangria, the beer cooler I'm going to make. You can um, find the recipe on my blog as well. Mm, that looks delicious. Okay, there you go. It looks beautiful. Cheers, everybody. Mm. And it's really delicious. Okay, so I'm going to put it away. We're going to get going on the yeast. So, this is good. Okay, so now, so I'm going to add my yeast. Just double check. Yeah. It's, it's so warm. Yes, it's warm. It's just warm. It's not hot at all. So I'm going to stir in the yeast. And I'm going to make sure it's all dissolved in here. And then I'm going to add it. I'm going to add it to those eggs. And then we're going to add the flour, a couple of cups at a time. Now you can also do the old method where uh, you make a well with dough, with the dough, with the flour. Sorry. And you can add the eggs and the yeast in the middle. Sometimes people do the old school method too. It depends. Okay. It's done. It's dissolving nicely. So what's everybody doing for this? Uh, I'm sorry. In the for comments, the... It, it seems like everyone's having their own family well, festivals are. this weekend. That's nice. I, I really love tradition. You know, our family had the tradition. Every every festa, my mother would make fulade. We'd have bifanas. We'd have roast uh, barbecue chickens. And uh, we'd go to the festa. So it was a big family celebration. And uh, I think it's important to keep traditions um, in our Portuguese culture, it's very important. So make sure your, your kids uh, follow these traditions of having certain foods. It brings back great memories. Uh, food memories create great family bonding. Okay, so now I'm going to add I'm going to add this to to the eggs. Yeah, I'll just need it a little bit. blended. So now I can add my dough, my flour there. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to add a couple cups at a time. Let it stir a little. Now my mother used to do this by hand. She used to get a big, uh, big Tupperware bowl. And she used to put everything in, and she used to mix. She put used her to make on. a lot, right? For the whole oh, family. Oh yeah, she used to make double. I'd say double this recipe. She'd use like two dozen eggs, and she'd have like two five pound bags of flour. She would just and every she would, everybody would come over and have fulata. It's just a tradition. Okay. Isn't that beautiful color already? Okay. So I'm 
gonna add a little more. This takes time. You just have to be patient in baking, especially. Okay, a couple more, a couple more cups of flour. A little at a time. You know, my favorite music is Roberto Leal music. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I used to dance at the fest all the time to Roberto Leal. And he was there. Yeah. What was it four, four years ago? Yeah, he was. Yeah, we saw him live. And uh, great memories. And uh, you know, well, may he rest in peace. Front we row. Had, yeah, we were in the front row. It was good memories. And the ranchos too. Um, they used to have on Sundays. They have ranchos there. And uh, oh, I used to love and go watch the ranchos. The little kids would, in the ranchos would dance. And my granddaughters would love to watch the dancers. It just takes a little while. We have to, there, okay. So a little more. Now this dough is gonna be a wet dough, okay? It's not gonna be like a thick bread dough. This is very moist, very light dough. Until you make this a few times, you know, you'll see how easy it is. Some people get intimidated by making filani, but it's very simple. You have to go so. Whoa, oh my God. Whoa. You're putting it fast. <laughs> Okay, whoops. <laughs> That's what happens I'm in sorry. live videos. I know, this is live, people. Oh, well. Well, now you know it's live, right? <laughs> that was funny. Okay. Candy's asking, when is it ready? <laughs> it's ready probably 3, 3.30. So everyone, yeah. thanks to everyone from our family watching. Yeah, yeah my whole Jessica, family. Candy, oh, Michelle. everybody's watching. Dan and That's Chris. That's great. Thank you, everybody. Okay, still a little more. I got the rest of the dough to put in. There. It's getting there. Okay, so now I'm going to add the rest of the dough. Now you see how, how good it's getting? It's getting so light. Look at that, the color from the eggs. Okay, so that's the rest of that. Okay, let me just wipe a little bit down. Okay, so now, this is the rest of the dough, of the flour. So now, we're gonna finish this. Now I have to go sew, so let's see. You know what it is? I'm work. I'm working, working this, backwards. I'm working backwards, so it's kind of confusing. Okay. She does? Oh, good. Oh, that's amazing, Lynn. That's probably the best way to do it, you know, because it's, it just you put a lot of love into that pump a lot when you do it by hand. See, it's, see how it's incorporating nicely, and you can't rush it. It just got it. It just got to take time. There. No, it's getting there. It's exactly the way you want. You want it to look. 
Yep. It's getting some nice air bubbles in the batter. So maybe while this uh, finishes beating up. Okay, hold on. All right, hold on a minute. It's almost getting there. You know what I'm going to do meanwhile? I'm going to... I put some olive oil inside. And I'm gonna rub it all around, grease it nicely. So that's ready. Now my stove top is warm from making those ricottas, so it's gonna be a perfect place to put this rising. recipe is going to make two medium-sized loaves of water. But if you want, you can make one big one. Yeah. Sometimes people do that. But uh, I like to make a couple because you cut into it and it, you know, it doesn't dry out as much. Yep, it's getting there. Like I said, it, you know, it takes a good 10-15 minutes of kneading this, this uh, dough. So everyone who's on the live, so we're going to do some giveaways today. Okay, yeah. Whoever's live, we're going to give giveaways. Yeah. Which will so announce every, the winners yeah, later we'll, on. We'll announce the winners once the collage ready. Yeah. We'll, we'll put the names, we'll let you know, we'll contact you. On the weekend show. Yeah. After yeah. We're going to turn this off. And I'm going to push the dough down a little bit. Okay, it's gonna go down. See how it's not a thick, thick dough like bread. It had, it's very moist. And you wait till you see it after, after it rises. It's gonna come out so light, light. Okay, so it still, still needs a little more. Until you do this, you know yourself. You can watch it, but you have to know the consistency and know what it's supposed to feel like, look like, like anything, like any cooking. Okay, so push the dough down a little bit. There. And that's just not normal that the, the dough goes up on the dough hook. That's normal. There's nothing we can we can do about that. So it rises for what, an hour and a half? Yeah, it will rise for about an hour and a half. It could be an hour. It depends. Yeah, it depends. when it doubles. Inside. Yeah, yeah, when it doubles. You'll see it. it's going to come out so beautiful. Okay, if you want to go close up, Lisa, you can see. Now, can you see that the dough separates from each other and there's little bubbles forming? And you can see. There it goes, see? The dough separates and there's bubbles in the in the batter. That tells me that it's almost ready. The dough's getting nice and light. So I'm gonna do this another minute and we're gonna be done. So yeah, because it has to rise, we're gonna, you know, come back on and off the light. Right. So just Okay. Keep notifications. So I think that's good. Okay. Because like I said, um, you can see the separation at the, at the bottom of the ball. You can see that there's like uh, uh, air pockets forming in it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to take this out. Okay. Let's see here. And we're going to go back to, put it back, we put it in our bowl and it's going to rise. This is live cooking, people. So, 
All right, so now we're gonna put it right into this into the bowl. Okay. You need a lot of muscle to bake to bake up bread and dough like this. You know that, right? Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna grease my hands a little bit with some, this oil, and I'm gonna help it. So there you go. Watch. See, you're gonna get in there, and you're gonna get every little piece of dough. You don't want to waste anything. So for people who are just joining, um, they're asking what we're making. We're making fulade, which is a Portuguese meat bread. It's a classic from the north of Portugal. It's a classic. And I um, I mix my dough. It's a meat-filled bread with chorizo and ham. This is a, a traditional recipe. Uh, my mom taught me this. And I can tell already. Did you see? Look at this. Can you see? How beautiful it's so soft and it's not sticking to my hand this is what you want to look for you want to find it that you want the dough to be like this it's um it's a, a soft dough so for, for people who've had problems making it do you think it's because of the yeast yes I think it was too hot I think people kill the yeast and the dough doesn't rise that's the number one problem that people have. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Yeah, Lisa's made, made this. Made this uh, yeah, she makes it. Lot. She's made this a lot, many times, and I'm so happy she learned her grandmother's recipe, right? Okay, so now, as you can see, there's basically nothing left in that bowl. Look, look at this. Now you go like that. You flip the dough over a few times. I can tell this is gonna come out beautiful because look at this. You see how plasticky it is? So I think it's gonna you roll it over, get it nice and greased with that bleach. I mean, that bleach, I'm so sad. <laughs> get with that uh, olive oil. <laughs> I you had too much vino, oh, so I someone else I, said I before. think I had too much wine. Okay, ready? So now, you don't have to do this. My mother always did this. She makes a cross in the middle of the bread. I think just an old tradition, because it, so the, bride, the bread's gonna leaven. Okay, ready? So I'm now gonna put some plastic. Let me clean up a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna put a little plastic foil over it and then we're gonna cover it with a nice warm towel. Okay, where's my plastic wrap? So I hope um, whoever is making this along with me is going to send me some pictures. I love to see yeah, pictures. Whoever makes it, send us pictures. Send us pictures. And we'll post them. it. Okay. So now I'm going to cover it with a little. I'm going to put a little bit of flour too. Just so that it uh, doesn't stick to that wrap. What time should we come back? So an hour to an hour and a half, Yeah. Right? So let's see. What time is it now? 12.30. 12 oh, so one thirty. I'd say about 1. Come back about one thirty. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, we'll go back live. Yeah. And yeah. that's when we're going to yeah. lay it out and put all the meat and we're put it baking. Yeah. And then baking and such. See? So it's going to be beautiful. And then we're going to cover it with a nice clean dishcloth. Now you don't want to be touching it, but leave it alone. Don't be peeking, just leave it alone for an hour and a half, okay? Okay, so the recipe is posted on your blog, right? Yeah. And I think on your Facebook uh, post. Yeah, the Facebook post. I have uh, the link, so it's there. You can go to my blog. You can go to uh, my Taste Portugal 101 Easy Recipes Cookbook. You can, it's on there too. Now you can get that book on Amazon. You can also get it on our uh, Lisbon Blue Etsy shop. Okay, and I can, if you go through Lisbon Blue, I can give you a signed copy, all right? So, uh, and uh, also, uh, the second cookbook, which is called Taste Portugal, More Easy Portuguese Recipes, will be out probably in October, so just in time for Christmas. And uh, we're going to be taking pre-orders on that cookbook, too. So, so get, you know, put yeah, just on, a heads put up. It on your, yeah, heads up. So put that on your Christmas list. Yeah. All right, so uh, we'll be back. Thank yep. you, everybody. And um, so we're going to go have a... Some of that wine cooler. Yep. <laughs> so it'd be fun at Yeah, time. so around 1.30, come back and we'll yeah. finish. Come back and join us. Okay. We'll be right. back soon. Okay, everyone. I hope you all cooked along with me. Bye. See you soon.